now delighted to welcome to studio a man with nine All Ireland's jangling in his back pocket, not to um, exclude his club All Ireland as well with James Stevens. Jackie Tyrrell, you're very welcome. Thanks, Joe. Great it's great to have you in. Yeah. I know you're usually stuck in RTE, but <laughs> you get to come and hang, hang, hang out with us for an afternoon. Yeah, so cool it's kids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're launching a pretty cool prize, actually. I must say this is great. So Littlewoods Ireland's ultimate Crow Park sleepover. So, in short, Little Woods Ireland will give one lucky family the experience of a lifetime. You wake up in Crow Park on the morning of an All Ireland final. You're in a luxury suite. You're decorated with the latest furniture, homeware, electrical, fashion products worth just the 15 grand. You'll take them home with you, and then you get your VIP tickets to the final. So, for more information, you can follow Little Woods Ireland on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's not bad. As prizes go, that's a bit of thought gone into that. That's pretty, pretty good. Cool, yeah, it's, pretty, it's like something I nearly bring me sleep and bag myself. You know, trying to get a piece of it. It's Jack, I, Jackie Tyrrell sleeps on your floor. Is that part <laughs> of the prize? Yeah, and I'll make the breakfast too as well. No problem. Hmm. But um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Like I don't know has anyone actually ever slept over in Crow Park? Are we breaking new ground with this? Yeah. Like you know, it's it's imagine a kid like of. 10 years of age and three, even, you know, say Galway get to an All-Ireland if they're from Galway or anywhere or Leitrim and uh, sleeping in Crow Park knowing that there's going to be 82,000 there the next day, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, um, that's a great one, I must say. So, for more information, Little Woods Ireland on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. As a neat segue, how did you sleep on the eve of All-Ireland Finals? Uh, at the start of my career, very poorly. Um, as the years went on, uh, Pretty, pretty okay, pretty okay. I always had my ritual. Always watched up for the match. Uh, loved it. Um, Did you? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, always watched. Loved it. Just kind of felt part of the celebration of it and all. Pageantry. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and I, I, so you I, didn't try and hide away from all that. No, I didn't. Now, no, no. Look, I, I'd be cute about it. like I wouldn't keep my head down that week. Like I wouldn't be going out for a coffee on a Saturday down in, in, into the middle of Kilkenny. But um, you know, I, I embraced some parts of it, and that was definitely one of it. Um, you know, I, I loved up for the match. I'd always watch it. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. And but sometimes you get into your head because they'd always have a competition on to get if we're playing Kilkenny, we're playing Galway. Christy Heffernan was on one year and to do a, a thing or a competition. And I remember the two previous years, Kilkenny had won it, and we won, went on won the All Ireland. And one year they were there. I think it was qui uh, quizzes or something like that. I was like, God, if we lose this, I wonder. If we, you know, the mind can just play tricks at that stage. But um, no, I loved it. I loved. I loved it for the match. And would you? sit up the day before the weekend four and clean the boots and get the hurl nicely set up and get your gear ready were you kind of OCD in that kind of respect about things uh, yeah I would have been and uh, that probably would have been boxed off like we trained Friday come home Friday night so I'd probably have a box off at that stage and Saturday was just chill out there then but uh, yeah I would have been quite OCD and like, the more nervous you are the more times you check your gear bag the more time you check your laces the more times you check the grip on your hurl um, what studs did you wear in Croker always wore Always wore studs, always wore studs. Unless, unless it was a consistent the whole week, and I'd always check the weather um, uh, to see if there was any rain. If there was a, a glimmer of rain on the Sunday, it would definitely be studs. Because it's a hard pitch, isn't it? It, it, it? it is a hard pitch, and my my rule on it always was that I'll take four or five days of, of sore feet and blisters versus slipping and, and a goal coming off me. It's grand for a corner forward or a midfielder or even a wing back to slip. If I slip, it's more likely going to be a goal. So. It was never even within question for me. Because I remember seeing Richie Hogan's feet, the picture a few years ago, the blisters mm. were rotten. Unbelievable, yeah. Blisters are no joke. Oh, I mean, they're... I'd say you're in pain. Yeah, you are, you are, and, like, it's, it's, it, 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 like, it's your feet, like, many times your feet pound off the, the off the ground. Um, Tommy Welsh flirted with an idea of uh, um, wearing one boot of stud and one boot of moldies. <laughs> As he would know, Tommy would do. I don't want to think it'll last too long. Um, <laughs> I remember asking him, like, why, which foot would you wear? And he said, I always turned on one foot, so that would always have the stud, and the other was moldy. So he, there was a bit of talk got into it. He operates on a level of genius <laughs> I can't quite <laughs> compete with. We, none of us can, can, can kind of get to that level. But uh, Would you see much of Tommy these days? Not really. I wouldn't see much of the lads, really. It, it's yeah. amazing that, you know, when, when you do go your... When you do retire, you kind of go your separate ways. It's and a familiar story, everyone's the same. Yeah, it is. And, and like, you obviously make a conscious effort and try, but you just don't. You go back into club mode yeah. and... You have different things going on, but I think it's the fact that you've given so much to the, the sport that you've loved, that when you, you, you leave it, that you have to give to the people that you more or less ignored for the years, and your, yeah. your, your family and your, your relationships, wives and, and girlfriends, they're kind of, you know, we all loved each other hurling, but like, you want to spend more time with your wife or your girlfriend than, than the lads. Um, but that's, that's just the nature of the beast, but the great thing about it is, when you meet, do meet up, you just pick up as if 
You yeah, know, we were that's the way. Ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. Because I was talking to one of your teammates, and I won't name him then, because we were just chatting off air one day when he was in here doing something. And I was saying, what's it like if you get together now? And he says, on the, occasion, the occasions that we do, and this might be just his perspective, mm. it mightn't be everyone's, but he says that he senses almost um, a touch of relief about the group that you fulfilled your potential, mm. that you didn't blow that, you didn't waste that chance, you didn't dick around too much, that actually you made the most of it. And he, he gets this sense of deep satisfaction when you're all together that actually... Yeah we can really let our hair down now because we did achieve it when we had the chance. Yeah, and there is that, that con contentment. We were at David Herzog's wedding there recently a couple of months ago and sure we got together and sure, sure the, the, the laugh was that uh, oh, sure, games and sweepers and sharp puck outs and all that, like, you know, it was just, you know, in our day, it's where we were 50 or 60, but that's yeah. just the way you carry on. The game moves pretty quickly, but... And do you start reminiscing about games, memories? Oh, of course we do, yeah, and watching games and we talk about stories and... You know, off the field, on the field. Remember when we did this? Remember when we did that? Remember when Cody did this? You know that kind of way. And it's just, it's just you're reliving your 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 unbelievable career experience that you had again. And uh, yeah, there is that. And sometimes you don't even need to say anything. It's just you're all together and you just get that sense. There's something special about this group, yeah. and we 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 squeeze up and we cut out of it. I'd say it's magic. What's emerged also afterwards with the likes of Tommy doing radio. I mean, he just came on the radio one day and turned out to be. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> you know, I mean, guess you knew, you knew, uh, and you know, you with your columns <coughs> and with your 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 writing and and Shefflin's doing bits now and mm. various others have ventured forward. Richie Hogan, I think, you know, the man, you know, he, even though he's still playing, it's obvious he's a real character as well, mm. very thoughtful. You all have lots to say. You're all strong-minded people. It's amazing how Cody or just the bubble kept that in for so long. Like Tommy Welch, how did no one know Tommy Welch was Tommy Welch? Yeah. I often wonder now. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel sorry for you that you missed out on 10 or 15 years where we got the experience the first hand. But was that Cody, do you think? Or was that a conscious decision you all made not oh, to be in the media at large? It was probably a bit of both. It was probably Brian kind of set the culture and then we knew the, the boundaries and the lines and we kept, you know, the car in between the ditches more or less. But uh, And I remember when I was in my book with, with Chrissy O'Connor and we used to have the chats and we're telling the stories and, you know, about after the matches, having a few pints and on holidays and the laughs and he goes... Uh, because it's, it's amazing that, you know, for, for so long, the perception in the media and the people out there just thought you were faceless, that you were just a team that just were so driven and all that. And he said, he actually had the best time of your lives. Like, you know, yeah. uh, we just thought he went, won a match, went home, repeat, oh. repeat, repeat. Robots. But, yeah. But, I had you down as robots. Yeah. Um, so wrong. Yeah. Behind it all, you have some of the most interesting, colourful characters that that played the game and, uh, you know, lads that just, just loved what they did and had the time of their lives and had unbelievable experiences and, and not all of them were on the hurling field. Yeah, I'm sure. So we're right in the thick of it now and I want to ask you about the semi-finals at the weekend for sure. There's a few other bits and pieces going on with the GEA. The Lee miller Porky queef thing. Mm. As a GEA player, as somebody who loves the association, loves everything that it stands for, supposedly, I haven't met anyone yet who's making the argument on the GEA side. Are you fairly disgusted, embarrassed, insert your own word here about the whole thing? Yeah, I would be. I, I, I'd be quite an open-minded individual. I think we're at a stage where if we're open up Crow Park to rugby and all other other sports, like, why don't we do it in Parky Cueve? You know, Liam Miller tragically was taken for us for so young. Uh, why not be involved in something very special and probably going to be a very mem memorable night for his family and everyone associated with Cork and all the clubs that he played for. So I would be quite... Like, I'd, I'd just love to know what actually happened. Was there a discussion? Did one person make the decision, uh, like... Because I'm sure if a group of guys got around the table and there was a proposal there, that, you know, the majority would rule, the majority would see sense. Um, you would think so, but then they come out with the statement that they've gone to the trouble of seeking legal advice, yes. and you're thinking, why, 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 why are you even bringing a lawyer into this? It is, it's just... It, it's, it's not even a legal issue, like, you know... Who's like, going to sue them? Exactly. It's, it's just a straightforward decision for me. It's a no-brainer get some goodwill out of it, like uh, support, uh, you know, a county support, another sport that lost someone like Lee Miller who represented his country. At the end of the day, we're all Irish people, like, mm. you know. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be quite embarrassed. I'd be quite... I would just... Know where was the log logic behind it? Um, and you would just hope that common sense would prevail at this stage, Joe, because it's, it's, it, it would be a, a memorable, memorable occasion. Yeah, I think everybody, if this thing happened to Turner's Cross... Yeah. It'd be fairly shameful. Yeah, it would. It would like and you know, people who want to come and support it wouldn't be able to get in and, and see the game. No. Like I for one, if that was on Parky Cleveland 
I'm not a big soccer fan, and I would probably go to it, like you know, just to support the cause. And mm. you know, Ray Keane is obviously involved in things like that. And gigs is coming, skulls is coming. Yeah, like why wouldn't you? So, um, I think it's unfortunate, and I think the longer it dra drags on, the worse for the GEA. Exactly, because if they are forced, and it, if it feels like they're forced into a U-turn, then they get no credit. Exactly, there's no goodwill. There's no goodwill. They're doing it because their hands were tied, because yeah. you know the PR that they're getting out of it. Um, whereas if they just did it at the start to get the kudos, to get the claps on the back, um, and it'd just be a great event and move on. They don't help themselves sometimes, do they? Sometimes they don't, no, really. And it's, it's, you just, as I just, the guys at the top table do, they sit down and think about the, the repercussions down at, down at, down at certain levels. Championship 2018 has been brilliant. Like it's kind of a sad thought that we actually just have three weekends left, and the next batch of Championship hurling is going to be in May, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, the upside and the downside to the, yeah. new, the new format, but the upside is a big upside. Like it's as good a year as anyone can remember for a long time. It's been a brilliant year, Joe. It's and it's very hard to go. God, it's better than this year. It's not because when you're caught in the mid middle of it, and the games are coming thick and fast. It's hard not to think that this is the best year. But it's just been unbelievable. Mm. And, the quality of player that we have at, at our at watching at the minute is just unbelievable. And the great thing about the round robin thing was each individual weekend, like if you were living anywhere in the Midlands, God, well, I go down and watch Kilkenny yeah. Wexford in the park, or I go to Turles and watch Tip and Waterford or something. You know, it was just, it's just unbelievable. Um, quality of games have been through the roof. Um, and for me, like some of the defending I thought was unbelievable this year in a game that's gone so fast. Um, and teams that defended with sweepers without it, I just thought the quality of defenders that we're producing now at the minute are, are really up there. Cause so it, what kind of things are you seeing from the defenders that you like? Um, just some brilliant, simple things so well, like body positioning, uh, blocking down. I love two guys going at it when it's just 50-50. Dottie Burke and Wally Welsh were going at it there in the, in, in the length of final. Like, I can't wait for John Connell and, and Dottie Burke this year. <laughs> I I I I walk on nail some Kilkenny to to, to to go apart to watch it. I just think it's going to be, uh, it's just going to be warrior like you know. And I just hope that they hold the two of them in there. They don't pull John Collin out like that. It's just there's I I'm thinking about it a lot. Some days I think Ty Burke is going to win it. Sometimes I think John Collin is going to win they it. Could both win. It could be a draw. Yeah. Go another thirty yards out the field, and you've you've a giant in Garrod McInerney against Tony Kelly, who's probably a quarter of his size. How's that going to go? I just think it's. The game is in a really good place at, 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 at that top level and, and the level of hurler we're producing is just, is just brilliant. Well, that's very interesting. Expand on that because I've never known so much talk in the last, let's call it the Derek McGrath, David Fitzgerald era mm. about the tactics, about the sweeper. I'm often surprised about the amount of focus on just one sweeper. Uh, I don't understand why it's such a big talking point to drop one man back, uh, really. Can you explain that to me? Because, I mean, you still have four or five forwards up the field to score. I don't know why there's this big problem with one sweeper dropping back. Well... The issue I would have with the sweeper is for me is that first of all it changed the art of defending. Me being a defender, I like I loved defending. I loved going out knowing that I was marking a really good forward and that I was either him or me. Mm. That if I slipped, it was a point, it could be a goal. Um, I kind of now if I'm a manager, that's a high wire act. So not everyone has Jackie Tyrrell and then Tommy Welch. Some teams are looking at their defence and the opposition attackers and they're saying, "Ooh." I need a bit of, I need some reinforcements back there. That, and that seems to me like a perfectly sensible decision. Well, for me, I wouldn't. Like, for me, you, you can see the sweepers. The sweeper for me came in 2013, really. Clear kind of caught everyone off guard, revolutionised the game. Yeah. Since then, I think that the really good teams and the really good players have found ways around it. We've seen Tipperary dismantle it with Watford. We've seen recently just Clare just bypassing uh, Sean Murphy. The sweeper has a role in the sense that it brings teams to a certain level. It builds unity, builds confidence, makes them competitive. Like if a manager came in and a team was shipping big hidings the year before, their defence is leaking, I'm all on for a sweeper, yeah. getting a bit of confidence going. But it's only going to bring you to a certain level. And Wexford are a good example of that, um, but it's not going to break into the top probably four or five. It's not going to win you in all areas. And, and why not? Why, where are you falling short then? What, what's the problem with it? The problem is... is when you take a, a forward out, when you take a forward out, out, yeah. out, it's so hard to work to get the scores because teams are so intelligent. The level of intellect with top class players, first of all, they'll make that sweeper very ineffective. They'll play around him, they'll play across him, they'll play over him. You see how clear this mantle, Sean Murphy, wasn't really effective. Yeah. So when he's not really effective, well, what are you? Are you just going to leave him there? And then at the other end. As I say, the quality of defending, it's very hard to get the scores. It's just a numerical thing. That's the bit I find surprising in a, in a game where you can shoot anywhere from 40, 50 metres in. 
and the ball can be moved so fast. I find it surprising that one man taken out to drop back into the sweeper can have such a detrimental effect on picking off a score at the other end. Well, the thing about the score at the other end, like you're generally, if you were playing without a sweeper, your strike rate as regards points from distance would want to be up 80 in the 80s, maybe in the 90s. Um, so you don't get as many shots off? You, you don't get that many shots, and the pressure, because you're dropping men back, that middle third where those shots are going to get off, there's going to be an extra body in there, and the fitness levels and speeds of the lads, they're just able to cut it down. And you pro- you're going to need goals to win it. Okay. That's the big thing. And if you don't have a, uh, if you have a, an, an, uh, an extra defender, and it's very hard to get a goal. You might get one, possibly you're going to need two or three to win it. Um, so that's that for me is, is where it's at. Like it's just it's a numbers thing. Um, and I think also with defending, if you're defending it and you're, you have a sweeper, mm-hmm. The kind of cut and trust to go attack the ball, the Tommy Welch is just going, getting the ball. That mentality is gone because it's a game of containment, it's a game of just breaking the ball to the ground and getting numbers around in your sweep, you're, you're more than likely going to win the ball. So you think the attitude changes? I think so, absolutely. And I see even if Even if they don't want it to change, it just seems to creep it's in. It's natural, yeah. Like, in, like if I was coming down a high ball, I would naturally go to catch it. But if I know I have a sweeper within 10 yards, I play the safe thing. I'm just going to break it down, and more than likely we will get enough bodies around us. Mm. Um, and I think Clare struggled with that when they moved away from the sweeper because the defenders were so programmed to think like that. They forgot, you know, that you have to attack the ball. You have to Art, get out in front yeah. of the simple arts of defending. Um, and it took a while for them to kind of reprogram their mind and their mentality like that. Yeah. Who's been your favourite player of the year? Ty Burke. I just think he's he's everything that you want in a defender. I just think he's. He ticks all the boxes, uh, a giant of a man, super in the air, does the simple thing so well, um, and I just think he's untouchable at the minute. Um, I actually felt sorry for poor old Billy Ryan of Kilkenny, he went in on him, and he just ate him alive, he marked Wally, no problem, so he can, a small fast lad, a big tall strong lad, um, for me he's, he's my player of the year, yeah. and the, probably the lad that's probably going against him for him is going to be marking him the weekend in John Conlon, and that's why I think that's... That's so um, teed up to be a cracker. Well, let's talk Claire Galway then, seeing as that seems to be grabbing your attention a little bit then. So that's five o'clock on the Saturday. Um, you mentioned uh, Burke and Conlon, that's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. And then, like, is Tony Kelly going to drill? I presume he's not going to do what Garoge McInerney wants, which is stand in front of him. He's going to go wandering, Richie Hogan style. Yeah, I'd imagine so. And I'd imagine Claire's tactic would be to stretch the forwards, to get the corner forwards, half forwards right out and play the ball through the lines. Um, I'd imagine to get Tony Kelly to play the flanks and run the wings, and he did that again. Wexford very well, cut down the wings and then over the bar. Um, but the thing for me, I think Galway are well capable of looking after that because they have in Paul Manion probably another guy that's that's probably up there as regards hurler of the year, and he's very good at detail and man marking. And a simple switch with there would be Garrod McInerney if he was struggling, or, or not if he was struggling on Tony. If Tony moved away and he just couldn't get near him and didn't want to leave the centre, well then you put him over on Peter Duggan, and you know there's a great matchup as well for Galway, I reckon. So Galway have Johnny Cohn also there. Yeah. Johnny Cohn is very interesting, I think, for Galway because he doesn't get a lot of credit. I often see his ratings after the game, and he's six and a seven, and I, I can't understand it because that's a guy people haven't noticed, and they're like, "Oh, I'll give him a six or a seven. Yeah, exactly. And I just think he plays that spy role, and like a spy in, in the NFL is a guy who just sits there and watch the, the, the quarterback, and he just quenches fire everywhere. You often see him the play be up there, and he's just looking left and right, seeing where the gaps are, seeing where they're exposed, seeing where they're vulnerable, and just slots back in there. And a lot of the time, I've I've kind of watched it. And I think it's very interesting. Are you seeing that off the TV? Uh, off the team and at, at games. It's harder to see on the TV. Yeah, at, at the games. I went yeah. to, uh, obviously, the, 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 the Kilkenny Galway games this year. Dahi Burke is constantly on to Garrod McInerney, and Garrod McInerney is constantly on verbally to Johnny Cohn. Right. Simple adjustments, left, right, drop there. But Johnny Cohn plays that role excellently and just gives that bit of cover there. Um, and he, and, and, and I, I've kind of noticed it's a thing that's coming into the game. I think Tipperary flirted away this year with Cottle Bar midfield, uh, trying to just get that mm. bit of protection there. Kilkenny do it with Conor Fogarty very subtly as well. Um, so it's a role that's evolved in the game and I think Johnny Cohen plays that very well and doesn't get the credit. And a lot of times he's not hitting the ball, it's just because he's making runs here, he's making runs there, he's just giving that bit of protection to the defence. Do you see Galway Clare as being a close game? Um, I would, yeah. I would. I think it's going to be very tight. I think it might be a lot more high scoring than people think. Right. Um, I do look at the, the Clare defence and I, like, I think... I don't think they're as strong. I don't think they're as good as the Galway defence. I think the Galway defence is very good. I would actually look at the idea of putting that David McInerney to six and Conor Cleary to three. Why I would do that is I think that Johnny Glynn, 
if you could just, I think Johnny Glenn and, and if that, David McInerney is there, it could be just a wrestling match. It could be just physical high spiling each other. And I don't think Clare can afford to have David McInerney. He's too good of a hurler there. Whereas if he was six, he drives on with the ball. He sets up a lot of attacks. And I think if the it's a risk to put Conor Cleary back there because he hasn't played a whole lot there. Mm. He was there earlier in the year. But if you could get Conor Cleary to a spoiling match with John, with, with, and just break even with Johnny yeah. Glynn, I knew David McInerney six driving things on. He offers an awful lot going. I understand the reasons why they are playing him, playing him there, but it's something that I would definitely look at. And if, if Clare were in need of an injection of something, that would probably be a switch I'd be looking at probably early enough. Brief tangent. When are you going into management? <laughs> Not any time soon. Really? Uh, yeah. I think you'd like it, though. Um, you have strong opinion. You, like, you see the game. It's clear like, you really see it. You have a feel for it. You have options in your head. Yeah, I, I, like, to, I like to look at a game and read and analyse the details of yeah. it. Why is that team winning? And why is that team losing? And what did they do wrong and right? And, uh, you know, I, I, it's just such an interesting game, Hurling. It's just, there's so many different dynamics to it. So when's management happening? <laughs> uh, well, I'm still playing club Hurling now at the minute, so yeah. I'm, is it something on the t- vague to-do list in the future? Oh, really, it's not something that I'm going to definitely do. That I'd lock in and say I'm going to do it. I, right. I wouldn't rule it out, but um, um, you never know. Like I'll definitely be involved in the club in some capacity and, and, and take it from there. Maybe I'll get... Tommy might give me a call to go select them or something like that. <laughs> uh, so, you're tipping Galway, ultimately, I presume. They are the team to beat. They are. They, are, they, they tick all the boxes. Physicality, uh, athleticism... Um, Hurling wise, but they're very fluid. Like, if you want to play a sweeper, they'll play a sweeper. Yeah. If you want to pack the middle and go war of attrition, physicality, while well, you're backing up the wrong tree. If you want to keep it open and expansive, like Kenny did, well, if the hurlers to do that, and when you've Connor Cooney on the bench and he can't make the team, yeah. I don't know what the story's in this weekend, you're in a pre- pretty good place. But I like their mentality in a sense. They got a kick in the backside against Kilkenny, they came out the next day. And they wiped the floor with Kilkenny. Yeah, that the first, first 25 minutes. Yeah, they just, they were awesome. just animalistic in their ways. I know they let Kilkenny back into it, but still they sealed the deal. So Cork Limerick is a bit less predictable. I mean, unless you see it a fairly strongly one way or the other. 14 man Limerick, they lost with Galan in the first half the last day, and it was an epic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it finished in a draw, the Kyle Hayes point, and then Cork had a almost effort the other end, blocked down right at the death. It was class. It was like, a, an, like game number 25 in the list of amazing games <laughs> this year. So we're hoping for something similar. How do you see this one going? I actually see Limerick very similar to, to Galway in a sense that they're, they're aggressive, they're rugged, uh, they're pacey um, and able to mix it in a lot of ways. I see Cork, without doubt, the mo- in the last four, the most athletic team, right. a little s- suspect at the back and I would worry about that. So for them, for Cork to win, I need to, it needs to be a shootout, it needs to be open um, and I, 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 I would fancy Limerick in this one. I, I like their mentality, I like what... I, l- I love how they responded again that goal against Kilkenny mm. five of the last six points they got it I liked off the puck out that Tom Morrissey caught that ball and put it straight over the bar I liked their bench their bench is very strong there's a lot to really mm. grasp with that Limerick team John Coyley has done a super job there um, Cork on the other hand have super sets of forwards like it, it's amazing to think that Alan Cadigan isn't in that, that is, is obviously he's injured in that if, if they did have him um, and I think in Dara Fitzgibbon and in Mark Coleman, I think these guys are like yeah. they're twenty twenty one. They're yeah. ready they're, made. They're hurling like they're 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 hurling with ten years. I was sure. interested to see Coleman this year after you know your, your breakout year. There's no second season syndrome. He's he's my favourite hurler. Watching, I love watching Mark Coleman. So comfortable on the ball. He's just unbelievable. Like the, the one, I wouldn't. Need, it's, it's unfair to say a weakness about yeah. the chap because the one area where he's not. A nine out of ten is, is probably the air, um, and it's probably something that Cork might go after, maybe with Garrod Hagerty or maybe with Tom Morrissey. But I think when and he will tidy that up and he will get a bit better. When I think do think that there's a hurler here and that guy, he's yeah. I just think he's super. But you're just just going with Limerick then. Interesting. Yeah, I just going with Limerick. Yeah, I, I think there's I think there's I think there's there's a confidence and belief in that team driven by the young lads. Um, like they've come from Arch called Reach, winning club all Ireland, or winning colleges all Ireland. Mm. They've won a few under twenty ones. I seen them in club all Ireland against Kilkenny last year, where they just bullied Kilkenny. Yeah, and they have that in their locker. So I don't think they'll fear any bit of physicality that 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 Cork will throw at them. Um, and so I would just, I, I think, I think Clare will just, I think that that I love their full back line. Their full back line is brilliant. There's a bowlness to that full back line. I just love. It. I seen Richie English marking Shane O'Donnell in an under twenty one uh, down in down in um, down in Clare, and all within the rules. Just took him out of the game. Was a nine. Was mm. pulling his socks. Was that everything? Just drove him demented. 
I think there's a, he'll be a brilliant full back eventually. Um, Sean Finn in the other corner is super. Uh, Mikey Casey, there's a v- really good. So they won't fear space. They won't fear Conor Lehan going in there. They won't fear Patrick Horgan in there. They're front. They're on the front foot type of hurlers. Um, and I just think they've a really. They've no one player that you would go right if if we take him out, you know, they'll trouble. Keen Lynch is probably their their tallies man. But like he had probably a quieter game. Kilkenny didn't didn't phase him. Other guys just stepped up. Mm, okay, it's a pleasure having you. And how's the club hurling going then? Finally, how's the body? Are, uh, you, are you that narc who, um, if the young lad gets by you first time, he doesn't get try and get by you second time? <laughs> it's interesting. I was actually playing in a, a seven aside tournament the weekend in St Thomas's in Galway. It was yeah. actually a great weekend and that. So a lot of space, a lot of young guys <laughs> running around the place. So that narky Jackie was out the weekend, all right. But uh, enjoying us. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. yeah we, we we've only had one game now. So we're playing in a couple of weeks on the 12th, uh, looking forward to it now. It's our, our second game, realistically, in, in 17 weeks. Like so, it's and The body's OK? Body's great. Body's Is it, yeah? Now, great. Yeah, so looking forward to it now. OK. Listen, pleasure having you in. That's a great competition, so if you're looking to get involved in that Little Woods Ireland Ultimate Crow Park sleepover, you can check out Little Woods Ireland on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Jackie Terrell, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Cheers, thank you.